Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to week seven of uh, the Concentrator Talk, uh, brought to you by the Oxygen Alliance. My name is Mwai Lungu, and I'm currently joining in from Lilongwe, Malawi. So for those of you that may not be aware, the Concentrator Talk is a virtual meeting that the Oxygen Alliance hosts every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time to discuss uh, the different aspects of uh, oxygen concentrator assessment, use, and maintenance. So remember that you can always send questions to us by email to info at oxygenalliance.org, and we'll do our best to respond to them during the next concentrator talk session. So if you have any questions um, during the talk, uh, you can always type them into the chat, and we'll do our best to respond to them. So just a reminder that uh, we ask everyone to keep your videos turned off and your microphones muted unless you are asking questions. So with me, uh, several technicians uh, joining us. We have Paulina Mohosho joining us from Johannesburg, South Africa. We have uh, Kowinda Singh joining us from Chandigarh, India. We have Joji Kwanga and Teto Sinjani jo joining us from Lilongwe, Malawi, and Francis Sambani also joining us from Lilongwe. Our topic of general interest today will be uh, talking about how to combine two oxygen concentrators using T connectors to achieve uh, high flow for non rebreather masks. So as usual, uh, we have some pause at the end of some of the questions, so please attend to them when they pop up. And um, as we normally do, I will be reading out the questions and ask one of our technicians to respond. So if you didn't get the question, we'll also paste it in the chat. So you also uh, have the chance to read it from there. All right, so moving on with uh, our questions now. So the quest first question says, one of the nurses at the hospital I am working at was complaining that one of the oxygen concentrators at the COVID ward was vigorously vibrating. When I went to the world to the ward, I did a purity test and the purity was above 90% and other tests were also okay. What can be the cause of the vibrations? So I'll ask uh, Paulina to please check this one up. Thank you, Mwabi. Okay, so the only component that vibrates in an oxygen concentrator is a compressor. The shock absorbers attached to the base of the compressor help to minimize the compressor vibrations. The following are some of the possible causes of a compressor vibrations. So one, it could be the shock absorbers loosely connected to the compressor. Two, it could be the springs um, and rubber in some of the compressors, uh, concentrators, shock absorbers becoming weak, broken or damaged. Three, it could be wrong shock absorbers installed during previous maintenance. And lastly, it could also be a comp that the compressor is leaning on one side. Sometimes the thread at home where the stem screw gets attached to the compressor gets damaged or enlarged. So if this happens, the screws will not be able to fasten the compressor, which causes it, which will then cause it to vibrate. Um, another um possible cause could be it's when the relief valve on the compressor is faulty pressure builds up in the compressor this causes the compressor to make unusual vibration and noise however the issue of pressure affects purity in this case the purity was not affected hence the vibrations might not be from the buildup of pressure but most probably from the shock absorbers So in order for you to find out what could be, what is the cause of um, the vibrations in the machine, so you would need to open the cover of the machine, the casing, to gain access to the compressor. Depending on the design of the concentrator, compressors can be accessed just after opening the outer cover, like in the SF, or a compressor can have another cover that will need to be opened, like in your Oxypio con concentrators. So after gaining access to the compressor, check if it, the stands are well secured. Check the fastening screws if they are loose or broken. Check the springs or rubber shock absorbers if they are weak, 
broken or damaged. So according to what you will find um, in the concentrator that you will work on, then you would need to either fasten the screws if they are loose or replace them if they are broken. You will also need to replace the springs or the rubber shock absorbers if they are weak, broken or damaged. So also check um, the threaded holes where the screws get attached to the compressor if they are enlarged or broken. So if the hole is enlarged, make new threads and use a screw that will fit into the new hole. Um, and if it is broken, then you will need to do some welding work to fix that. So those are the causes and the solutions to a compressor that vibrates during an operation. Thank you, Moabi. Thank you very much, Paulina, uh, for that explanation. I hope it was clear enough. So if we have any questions uh, from the audience uh, regarding to the explanation that was given, uh, please raise your hands and then uh, we'll attend to it. Um, if the other technicians also have uh, some comments to add on to that, uh, you can also come in. All right, seems we don't have uh, any questions. So moving on to the second uh, question of the day. So it says, when I was carrying out uh, a previous preventative maintenance in the children's ward, I came across this oxygen concentrator that was working perfectly. The oxygen purity that this concentrator was producing was within the recommended range, but the LED for low purity was illuminating. Any idea why this was illuminating? Um, I'll ask uh, George to take this one up. George, I think your microphone is muted. George, we still can't hear you. Okay, so um, it seems uh, we have an issue with George there. So we'll just uh, keep that question. And then uh, once we have him back online, uh, he'll pick up from where he left from. So we'll jump on to the next question and then we'll have George uh, do that once he's connected. So the next question says, I am working on a long Fian J5 oxygen concentrator. I serviced the compressor and fixed existing leaks. The purity improved from 36 to 72 percent. I have zeolite to fit into one sieve bed. Will the purity improve if I only fill one sieve bed? Uh, so, Francis, can you please take this one up? Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, it is possible that under certain conditions, you would have uh, one sieve bed contaminated of the two. Safe beds. So uh, once one example of such a case would be when you have a loose pipe feeding going to that one safe bed. So uh, we should know that zero does react with water. So the air around us does also have moisture in it, uh, referred to as humidity mostly. So uh, when the humidity is greater than 50%, uh, that's when uh, the zero gets affected as in zero it itself has high affinity for water. So it does react with the water and then it can't absorb uh, nitrogen anymore. So it, it loses its effectiveness in terms of uh, purifying air, the, giving us the oxygen that we need. So whenever the humidity around us is greater than 50%, uh, we, and we have zero it, which is open to the surrounding, it will get contaminated. So if you have such an, an, an instance, for example, that you have a loose pipe feeding going to the sieve bed, uh, you're most likely to damage the zeolite inside. Uh, but then in looking at the question in your case, however, I doubt that one sieve bed could be more severely damaged than the other. So some, so as I was already said, some of the more common zeolite contaminants are moisture and the other is dust. If you are, so, if you have a combination of two beds, where one bed, one, where one bed 
contains opioid and the other has no opioid, as you are suggesting in the question, you are very likely to contaminate the the, the seed bed with the new opioid. Uh, this is so because moist and dust can move from the seed bed containing opioid to the bed that has just been filled with new opioid during either pressure equalization or paging. So I'll define these two terms. Pressure equalization uh, is a process that allows air to flow from one bed uh, that is being fed to the bed that was being paged with the empty increased pressure of the depressurized bed. Uh, while paging is a process whereby nitrogen molecules can be dissolved by venting the seed bed to the atmosphere, thereby reducing the pressure and the, and the adsorp adsorptive force. Um, so as you asked in the question, uh, I wouldn't recommend for you to refill the other, uh, to just refill one safe bed, but rather I'll wait for you to have enough zero eight for you to be able to refill both safe beds. So regardless that you only have one dummy safe bed, it is a good practice to change the whole pair of safe beds uh, as, as we had explained above. Thank you, Mao. Thank you very much, Francis. Um, for that explanation. I don't know if we have any questions or comments from the audience and the other technicians. I see we have a hand from George. Uh, so I lost my connection. Uh, so I was just trying to show that I'm, I'm uh, from back. Ah, okay, great. All right, so it seems we don't have uh, any further questions on the explanation Francis just gave us. So I'll ask um, Ted to please uh, bring up our first poll of the day. All right, I have launched the first poll. So it's actually asking if you have ever replaced one, only one sieve bed on an oxygen concentrator. So I'll give it like 30 seconds so that people can respond to it. Great. Um, so as we're responding to that, for those of you who do not know where to find the pause menu, if you're using a, a computer, if you go to the bottom right of your screen, you will see uh, there is a an activities button. It's basically a small triangle and circle and a square. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see the pause option from there. If you're using a mobile phone, just click on the menu options and then you, you see uh, activities listed on the window that pops up. If you click on activities, you should be able to see um, the pause menu from there. All right, so I'm going to end the poll now. So it seems like we have five no's, so nobody has like replaced only one zip bed on an oxygen concentrator. Thanks, Maui. Thanks, MT. Um, so we'll just jump back to the question uh, that we skipped uh, since we have George back online. So I'll just read it out again uh, so that we catch up. So the question says, when I was carrying out a preventative maintenance in the children's ward, I came across this oxygen concentrator, which was working perfectly. The oxygen purity that this concentrator was producing was within the recommended range, but the LED for low purity was illuminating. Any ideas why the LED was illuminating? George, I hope you're still with us. Thank you, Mao. In most oxygen concentrators, uh, oxygen purity is monitored using uh, an oxygen sensor that is connected with the control board uh, that interprets the electrical signal from the sensor as either low or normal oxygen purity. If the sensor is faulty or isn't well connected to the board, then weak signal or no signal will be sent to the circuit uh, control board. This will lead to wrong interpretation of the oxygen purity in the system. And uh, because of this, the LED for low purity will keep on illuminating despite having normal purity levels. So what you need to do is to trace the connections between the oxygen sensor and the controls, uh, control uh, board and check for the continuity using a multimeter and also inspect for any visible disconnection along the traces or the wire to the sensor. 
if there are, uh, if there are disconnections, uh, take the last step to connect to the circuit. This can be done by soldering the sensor on the board if the connection is through the soldering. Uh, securing the sensor through plugging if plugging connectors are used. Uh, replacing the cables if the connection between the sensor and the board is through the cables. If after fixing the disconnections but the LED still remains, uh, then the sensor can be folded. You should remove and replace it with the, the working sensor. If the LED turns off uh, with the new sensor in place, then the problem was with the sensor. You have to replace it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, George, for that explanation. Um, I don't know if we have any questions from the audience on the uh, explanation that George just gave, uh, or if we have any further comments from the other technicians. Okay, so no questions. So we also have another poll. Um, Teto, can you please launch that one? All right, sure, I'm launching it now. I hope you can see it. So the second poll says, have you ever encountered an oxygen concentrator with its LED for low purity illuminating, even when the concentrator is producing the recommended oxygen purity level? So Maui, do you want to remind people to maybe share the email addresses if they are joining with us for the first time? Yeah, so for those of you joining us for the first time, um, we welcome you to the Concentrator Talk. So we do this every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time. So if you want us to add us to our mailing list, just drop your email in the chat and then we'll add you to the list. Yeah, so it seems like people have voted. So I have four yeses and one no. So it seems like the majority have seen this problem before. Thanks, Maui. Thanks, Tato. Right, so moving on to the next question now. So the next question says, I am a recent graduate and I have been employed by a certain private hospital as an electrician. Since the hospital does not have a trained biomedical technician, I will be in charge of most of the medical equipment, including oxygen concentrators. I wanted to know if there are any limitations to an oxygen concentrator in terms of performance. So I'll ask uh, Kowinda to take this one up. Thanks, Mavi. So oxygen concentrators have few problems during use Nonetheless, it is important to be mindful of the few limitations and precautions. So first, some, some precautions we have to install where you are installing the oxygen concentrator. Keep at least 30 centimeter open space all around the oxygen concentrator. So uh, no open flames or smoking near the oxygen concentrator. Uh, power to be used should be stable or either we can use a stabilizer to do so. Always keep the flow meter above half liter per minute in case of five liters per minute oxygen concentrator. And in case of high flow 10 LPM oxygen concentrator, we should keep the flow meter always above two LPM, two liters per minute. Clean the filter at least once a week. Replace if dirty or turn out. I replace humidifier water every day in case of winters use lukewarm water. So replace the cannula for every patient. So since the hot and the humid air affects the purity of oxygen, in tropical countries humidity ranges from 50 to 87 percent in summer season. Since zeolite has a higher affinity to moisture, Moisture is absorbed by the zeolite in preference to nitrogen. In such humid conditions, oxygen con concentration may be reduced to 70%. So, always take care of hotter humidity. So, low voltage does also affect the performance of an oxygen concentrator. 
low voltage cause causes overheating of the motor due to insufficient running of the running uh, power of the motor so check the voltage rating on the concentrator and that you can getting correct voltage as specified by your local supply it may be 120 or 220 so voltage regulator can help a lot so in case of uh, we are in india there are a lot of power fluctuation so we suggest to use uh, voltage stabilizer with the oc so it has reduced the failure rate to nearly 50% by using the stabilizer so altitude does also affect the performance of an oxygen concentrator altitudes of greater than 4000 meters can reduce the oxygen purity up to 80% so due to low oxygen concentrators in the ambient air itself so however should not cause difficulties in more case, most cases uh, so small oxygen concentrators are not intended or suitable for compressed ga gas and tca machines or ventilators because they have low output pressure so these machines need a high pressure output machine so these are some of the limitations and precautions to be used thank you mavi thank you very much kuvinda for that explanation i hope it was clear enough so if you follow these steps then you will be good to go with uh, your oxygen concentrators I don't know if we have any questions on uh, the explanation that Kuminda just gave us from the audience or any comments from the technicians. You can just raise your hand. All right, so it seems we have no questions. Moving on to our next question of the day. So it says, I am a technician for a certain mission hospital that is yet to be opened and would like to purchase equipment for oxygen therapy. The clinicians prefer using oxygen cylinders compared to oxygen concentrators. Is there any difference between purchasing oxygen cylinders and oxygen concentrators? Which of the two would you recommend us to buy? Um, so I'll ask Francis to take this one up. All right, thank you. Uh, so firstly, it is worth noting that both oxygen cylinders and oxygen concentrators can be used in oxygen therapy. Uh, but firstly, I'll go through the oxygen cylinder, then we'll go through the oxygen concentrator. So if we look at the graphics, uh, we have a picture of an oxygen cylinder, and to it is connected a pressure gauge uh, and also a regulator. We also have a flow meter connected to the uh, cylinder to control the output flow, which, which will be going to the patient. Um, so an oxygen cylinder, uh, you also see the, you, have, you also have a, uh, a pictorial view of the face mask and also the nasal cannula, which is used with the cylinder. So an oxygen cylinder contains oxygen under pressure and has a pressure gauge which gradually falls as the oxygen is being depleted. To use these oxygen cylinders, uh, you need a pressure regulator and a flow meter to which a line of tubing is connected and a nasal cannula or an oxygen mask on the end, as you've already seen on the graphics. Uh, in this way, oxygen in the cylinder can be directly delivered to the patient's nose. So we'll have to go through the pros and cons of an oxygen cylinder of an oxygen concentrator. So the advantages of an oxygen cylinder of an oxygen concentrator, the first one is that uh, it doesn't require any power to supply oxygen to the patient. And uh, an oxygen cylinder does not produce noise. That's the second one. Uh, whilst, whilst the news, as it has no associated alarms or a compressor, which is a source of noise, as in an oxygen concentrator. The third advantage being that oxygen cylinders have a lower initial cost. Uh, so looking at the disadvantages, the first one is that oxygen cylinders are heavy and they lack portability. The second one is that oxygen cylinders have a limited amount of oxygen and as such, they need to be refilled or replaced once the oxygen is depleted. Uh, the last disadvantage is that oxygen cylinders have a greater running cost as they need to be refilled or replaced frequently. So that's on oxygen cylinders. Uh, whilst an oxygen concentrator is a device that concentrates oxygen from, an, from ambient air by selectively removing nitrogen, 
through pressure swing absorption, and then it supplies oxygen in mist air to a patient. Neurally purchased oxygen concentrators have an output pressure uh, factor is set. So therefore, you don't need to readjust. You need to just let it be as it is. So for you to use an oxygen concentrator, you just have to set the flow meter to the desired flow and use it with a cannula or face mask. So this is different as in, in the oxygen cylinder, you need to set the flow, uh, the output pressure yourself. Uh, if it, if uh, that is comparing with an oxygen concentrator, which has just been newly purchased and hasn't been tapered on a wet one before. Uh, so we'll also look at the advantages of an and disadvantages of an oxygen concentrator over an oxygen cylinder. The first advantage being that an oxygen concentrator provides an, an unlimited supply of oxygen as it is able to continuously draw in air and treat it by removing nitrogen. This means that an oxygen concentrator will never run out of oxygen, unlike in an oxygen cylinder. Of course, eventually an oxygen concentrator will run out of oxygen, but then the time frame is quite big as compared to an oxygen cylinder. So the second advantage is that oxygen concentrators are notably lighter and portable than oxygen cylinders. Also oxygen concentrators do not rely on pressurized oxygen and thus do not need a dust tank as do oxygen cylinders. The third advantage is that oxygen concentrators have a cheaper running cost as compared to oxygen cylinders. Now looking at the disadvantages, the first one is that Oxygen concentrators rely on battery power or electric power to perform the air filtering and oxygen flow. The second one is that oxygen concentrators have a higher initial cost. And the third disadvantage is that oxygen concentrators produce noise from the compressor and alarms that come with them. So uh, looking at the above advantages and disadvantages of an oxygen cylinder and an oxygen concentrator over the other, an oxygen cylinder would deliver the same desired flow at the regulated pressure, usually set at 20 psi, just like an oxygen concentrator will. The only major difference being that an oxygen cylinder will run out of oxygen after some time, while oxygen concentrators will continue producing oxygen until the molecular sieve responsible for removing nitrogen from air loses its effectiveness. So looking at the above factors, I would recommend one to purchase an oxygen concentrator for long, for long term use and an oxygen cylinder for a short term use. Thank you, Maui. Thank you very much, Francis, for that explanation. So I hope uh, you now have uh, an idea of which one is better and which one is not. So I hope you make a good choice on which one to go for. So if we have any questions from the audience, uh, you can raise your hand, or if we have some comments from the other technicians, please, uh, you can add on to that explanation. All right, seems we don't have any more questions on that. Uh, so moving on to our next question. So it says, I'm working on an ASAP, uh, New Life, elite oxygen concentrator and I want to service the compressor, but I do not have spare cylinder sleeves to replace the worn out sleeves. Can I reuse the worn out cylinder sleeves? So I'll ask uh, Paulina to take this one up. Thank you, Moby, for the question. So in order to produce compressed air, there are several smaller components inside the compressor which work together. Among these components are cylinder sleeves, which are chambers where compression takes place. Piston caps are the components inside the compressor which sit on top of the pistons. The function of these piston caps is to pull up the air from the intake and push it out um, to the exhaust by creating an airtight seal in the cylinder sleeves. The cylinder sleeves and piston caps are the most frequently replaced components whenever one is servicing the compressor. So different compressor models have different sleeves which differ in height and also in diameter. So due to wear and tear, the internal lining of the sleeves become worn out and the amount of pressure that gets pushed out to the exhaust port is reduced. Hence, a badly worn out sleeves must be replaced. Therefore, in the case where one has no spare cylinder 
sleep no spare cylinder sleeves to replace the ones which are worn out. They can reuse the worn out sleeves, but, but this will depend on the compressor model and also the extent of wear and tear. For the compressor models such as the W your ZW140 and the Thomas 2669, their sleeves have a height which is larger than the travel distance of the piston. So this gives us the advantage to reuse the sleeves. Mostly for the sleeves of the ZW140, only a quarter of the sleeve wears out. And on the other hand, about half of the sleeve in Thomas 2669 gets worn out. So to reuse these sleeves, you would need to gently clean the worn out portion of the sleeve with a small, with a piece of um, a fine sandpaper. You can dip the sandpaper in soapy water to make the cleaning easy and make sure to wipe the sleeve with a cloth to make it dry. Um, so once the sleeve are dry um, and you are putting it back into the compressor, you would then have to turn the sleeve upside down so that the worn out portion is on the bottom side and the portion which is intact will be on the top side um, or, or on the compressor. So in short, if the, the sleeve are badly worn out, you will have to replace it. But then in some other compressors, you will have the advantage of reusing it. But then before reusing, you would just have to clean it. Thank you, Moby. Thank you very much, Paulina, for that explanation. I hope it was clear. Um, so, if we have any questions or comments uh, on the explanation that she just gave, you can please paste it in the chat or just raise your hand and then uh, we'll be able to attend to it. Okay, silence means we have no questions on that. Right, so we'll take a short uh, break from the questions and then uh, we'll now jump on to our special topic of the day. Uh, so as I mentioned at the beginning, today we'll be talking about how to combine two oxygen concentrators using T connectors to achieve high flow for a non-rebreather mask. So George will take us through that explanation. George. Thank you, Maui. Oxygen uh, is included on the word health organization, uh, risk of essential medicine. Yet it is still not widely available in low and middle income countries. Uh, settings. As uh, we are all aware, there are different types of oxygen supply systems. Uh, even my friend Francis already touched some of them. Uh, we have PCA plant, VCA plants, uh, which can be also categorized to pipe systems. Uh, we have uh, the concentrators uh, and we have uh, other storage system, uh, oxygen storage systems like uh, tanks and uh, cylinders. So these uh, systems are different in terms of the capacity, uh, volume, and uh, flow rate. Oxygen concentrators are favorable and suitable option for administering point of care oxygen in low and middle income countries, especially where cylinders and pipe systems are unavailable. Concentrators are designed for continuous operation and can produce oxygen uh, 24 hours per day, seven days per week, for up to five years or more. These devices can be used at any level uh, of every facility to provide oxygen therapy for as long as there's a continuous source of uh, reliable power. Oxygen can be delivered to patients through different methods. Uh, one of them is through nasogranulars. Uh, and um, with nasogranulars, uh, are used to deliver oxygen to patients when they uh, when you need uh, uh, raw concentration and low flow in, uh, is required. So this is basically in the range of one to six liters per minute. So when the need is uh, around that, uh, you can use uh, nasopanulas, which in terms of uh, uh, fraction of expired oxygen, which is the required oxygen that the patient needs is uh, 24 to 40% uh, uh, of ox of, of fraction of expired oxygen. Another method where oxygen can be delivered to a patient is through a simple face mask. Uh, a simple face mask is usually used to deliver a low to moderate amount of oxygen to a patient. 
So a simple mask contains a hose on the sides uh, to let exhaled hair through and to prevent suffocation in case of a blockage. Uh, it can deliver around 40% to 60% of fraction of inspired oxy at 6 liters to 10 liters per minute. Another method that is uh, used to deliver oxygen to patients is a uh, face tent. Uh, with face tent, it is uh, a soft plastic uh, that covers the nose and the mouth. Uh, face tents, uh, which uh, they are also called face shoes, uh, deliver oxygen at a flow rate of uh, 10 to 15 liters per minute. Uh, with fraction of inspired oxygen at 40 percent. Another method where oxygen is delivered to a patient uh, is through a ventral mask. Uh, a ventral mask uses a plug-in cartridge, uh, each with a different size, uh, reducer to create a ventral effect, uh, which draws in long air to mix with uh, uh, the oxygen. So the cartridge is selected uh, uh, to achieve the desired fraction of inspired oxygen. A ventral mask can uh, deliver between 2 to 15 liters per minute of oxygen and up to 60, uh, that's up to 60 percent of um, fraction of inspired oxygen. Another method where uh, oxygen is delivered to a patient is through a high flow nasal cannula, as I already talked about the nasal cannulas. Uh, but these are high flow nasal cannulas, uh, these are big in diameter and they support high flow up to 60 liters per minute, and they can deliver uh, up to 100% of fraction of inspired oxygen. Another method where uh, oxygen is delivered to a patient is uh, what we're going to talk about more, is through an inhaler breather mask. So with an inhaler breather mask, you get about 80 to 95% of the fraction of inspired oxygen. And uh, the flow rate uh, for, 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 for this method is uh, between 10 liters to uh, 15 liters per minute. So this, this, uh, uh, this mask requires a high flow of oxygen. So as we know, most of the oxygen concentrators uh, that we have uh, have a maximum rated uh, flow rate of uh, 10 liters per minute. So the question might be that, um, is there anything that we can do to get a high flow rate from oxygen concentrators that can be used with many? Was we are saying we are looking for 10 to 15 liters per minute uh, of flow rate, but uh, oxygen concentrators only deliver with, uh, up to 10 liters per minute. Most of them deliver up to 10 liters per minute. So, what's the solution? So, there is a solution that can help you gain a high flow rate from uh, a concentrator, but this requires you to have two oxygen concentrators connected together. So the use of a tea connector is a way of connecting two oxygen concentrators to increase the flow rate. This can be achieved, uh, uh, this can, be, can, can, can achieve more than 15 liters per minute that matches the maximum uh, flow rate that is required with an breather mask. Uh, even with the other high flow, uh, uh, other oxygen delivery systems that require half high flow rate of oxygen. So what you need to do is to make sure that uh, the combined flow from the two concentrators exceed 15 liters. So you might have uh, uh, two 10 liter models, uh, or you might have one is a five liter model, the other one is a 10 liter model. It doesn't matter if uh, uh, the make of these concentrators are different, as long as they're able to have, uh, uh, it's, 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 let's say it's a 10 liter model, or the other one is a five liter model. So if you are able to have a, com a, a, a combined uh, a flow rate of 15 liters per minute, you can use with uh, an inhaler mask. So as you can see in the, uh, in the graphics there, uh, there are two concentrators that are connected uh, that are the T connector. So it doesn't matter uh, which type of T connector that you use. Uh, there are no special techniques that, that you can use. So anything that can help you to accomplish this task, it's okay. So from experience, um, here in Malawi, we normally use uh, uh, six mm push fittings, the one that you see in the graphics, uh, tea connectors, because they're readily available. You can find them uh, uh, in shops that uh, uh, sell carpets. 
So basically, for you to achieve uh, uh, a high fraud return and do the mask, you need to have the T connector and you have to uh, have two OSIN concentrators that are connected together. Uh, they are combined, the fraud rate will help you to get more, uh, to, to help you to use them with uh, an elevator mask. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, George, for uh, that explanation. Um, I don't know if we have any questions or any comments from the other technicians on the explanation that George just gave us. You can either paste it in the chat or just raise your hand and then ask your question. I see we have a hand from Francis. Yeah, so uh, my question is on PUAD. Are you supposed to measure the two concentrators independently? or maybe you combine them and then you measure the PAD after, after combining the flow? Uh, you can measure the concentration after, um, measure, uh, after connecting them together with a T-connector. So as, as I said, the, you are combining the two OSIN concentrators. Make sure that uh, uh, the, those concentrators are working. You are able to get uh, maximum flow rate from from those two concentrators, and then you can connect them. Uh, you can connect them to get uh, that flow rate and uh, even achieve that period. I see we had another hand from Letseka. Yeah, um, I just wanted to know. So you've got a concentrator that can deliver up to. One liters per minute, um, and another concentrator that can go say up to thirty liters per minute. Can we combine those concentrators as long as they've got the same pressure? How do you? George, I hope you got that. No, oh, unfortunately, I didn't get it clear. Well, the first one is. Uh, how many liters per uh, how many liters per minute? Yeah, I was saying um, actually, can you con can you connect two big and the small concentrator together to uh, to achieve the high flow? Yes, uh, that's possible. Um, actually, as I was explaining, you can combine a ten liter model and a five liter model so that you can achieve fifteen liters per minute. Okay, great. Thank you. Not 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 considering um, uh, the the compressor, or maybe the the size of say the pressures that comes from each concentrator. Uh, no, basically the ocean concentrators uh, uh, for investors an air a ten liter model. There's a pressure range that uh, it operates, and even in a five liter model, there's uh, a pressure a, uh, a pressure range that it operates in. Now, when you combine the two, it's not that uh, the pressure uh, will drop based on, on that you have connected them to. No. Oh, okay. Thank you. Teto, you also had a hand. Yeah, I just wanted to add on, like, just to be, just to clarify. So, for the sake of, let's say, uh, testing the oxygen purity when you have joined the two concentrators, let's say a five liter, a five liter model and a ten liter model, please make sure that uh, you don't use the the oxygen analyzer that uses uh, ultrasonic sensor because most of them they can only measure a maximum flow rate of ten liters per minute. Beyond that, you're gonna get forced leadings. So you need to be careful. So I would recommend you test each and then you can do, if you are sure that each is producing um, enough amount of oxygen in terms of purity, then you should be okay with that. And then on the, on the question of joining a five liter model and a 10 liter model, um, this can work because you're just delivering the oxygen. It's just flowing off. It's not like being complexed. Um, if you have different uh, concentrators in terms of pressure, it becomes a problem when you're complexing the oxygen itself. The other one with uh, small pressure suffers. Yeah, that's what I can say. 
Great. I hope that is clear. Uh, I don't know if we have any further questions on uh, that. If we don't, uh, I would just like to remind uh, everyone, uh, so for those of us who haven't yet submitted your contact details and you want us to add you to our mailing list, please do so in the chat. So just paste your email address in the chat and uh, also just let us know where you're joining from. All right, so moving on to um, our final question of the day. So the question says, during routine maintenance of a long fian j5 concentrator i noted that the copper pipe found on the cooler section was partially cut off just near one of the fins is there a simpler way to solve this problem than soldering with a copper rod uh, so i'll ask paulina to take this one up okay thank you Modi. So when air has been compressed, its pressure and temperature rises. Thus, there is always a need for a cooling system in each and every compressed concentrator to reduce the temperature of the compressed air. In some oxygen concentrators, concentrator models, the cooling system is made up of a coiled hose, which is connected to the compressor exhaust, while in other concentrators, a pipe coming from the compressor exhaust run above the compressor cooling fan in order to cool the air. The cooling system of a long fan J5 oxygen concentrator consists of a fan and a copper pipe with aluminum fins on its surface. The fan helps in cooling the compressor while the copper pipe helps in cooling the pressurized air coming from the compressor exhaust before it reaches the molecular seat beds. So as stated in the question above, one way of fixing a leakage on the copper pipe is to solder using a copper rod. In addition, an easy way to fix a leaking copper pipe in the cooler section of a J5 concentrator is to use any high adhesive metal filler and epoxy that can withstand high pressure and high temperature. Epoxy is formulated to set hard and bond well with most of um, most rigid metals. So to fix the leak, make sure the area around the leak is free of dirt, um, free of rust, paint, oil, and also free of grease. Wire brushing or sanding will help to enhance adhesion to smooth surfaces. So most epoxy comes with two tubes with different cap color codes. Follow the mixing procedure on the manual that comes with the adhesive metal fillers. When applied correctly, adhesive metal fillers are capable of withstanding operating temperature and pressure from the concentrator compressor. So these are the easy ways that you can solve um, a problem with um, leaking copper pipes. Thank you, Mabi. Thank you very much, Paulina, for that explanation. So I hope uh, that will help to solve your problem. Uh, so if you have any further questions on uh, the explanation she just gave, please uh, raise your hand or just paste it in the chat and uh, we'll attend to it. So this being our final question, we also have our final poll of the day. So Tedo, can you please uh, open up our final poll? All right. So I have opened up the poll. So it's asking about, um, have you ever used epoxy before? So we'll give it 30 seconds so that people should respond to it. So for those who are not familiar with uh, the epoxy, they, there are two tubes you mix together and then you, you place them on the material you want to glue and then it gets so hard. So there are different brands of epoxy. So you can just look around and see which one is available for you. Yeah. Great. All right. So it seems like people have voted Maui. Um, I'm going to end, okay, they're still voting. So I'll give it maybe five seconds so that people yeah. can still vote. All right. 
So it seems like we have six votes for yes. So it seems like people have used this method before. Thank you, Maui. Thank you very much, Teto. Um, so reaching this far, this takes us to the end of our oxygen concentrator talk today. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us uh, for this week's concentrated talk. Remember that we'll be meeting again here sometime next week. And if you have any questions, you can send them to us in advance uh, through our email info at oxygenalliance.org. And we'll do our best to respond to them. So be sure to visit our website, www.oxygenalliance.org. And Ted or maybe even just paste that in the chat. And you'll be able to, you will learn more about the Oxygen Alliance from our website. We also have our, a YouTube channel. So those of you who missed a couple of the past concentrator talks, we record every session and upload it on our YouTube channel. So just search Oxygen Alliance and you'll be able to find all the videos of uh, the previous uh, sessions. We also have recordings on uh, some of the special topics that we do, uh, like uh, how to service the compressor or how a compressor works, how to change a seedbed. So you can also find the different videos uh, on that on our YouTube channel. And please don't forget to subscribe when you visit our YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you who haven't shared with us your email address and you want to be added to our mailing list, please do so in the chat. So we'll leave the chat open for a few minutes and then you can paste your email address from there. So reaching this far, I don't know, Mteto, if you have any uh, further comments to add on before we close. Um, nothing to add from this side. Thanks. Great. So we'll see you all again next week, same time, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh, yeah.